possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. Oh, and there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast. Hope you're all doing well. Mikey Stafford here. I am joined by Jesus. There's a there's an array of Cork and Kerry greatness here that barely fit into Parky Ring. We got Jerk Canning, Colm Cooper, and Rory O'Neill. How are we all doing, lads? Very good, Mikey. Very good, Mikey. Can't um, wait. Can't wait for Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, um, delighted to have you both on. But Colm, you have been on with us. Jerry's never been on with us before, so Jared, welcome to the podcast. Um, it already seems far far more uh sophisticated and well spoken so uh, it's good to have you with us um so <laughs> let's um, let's let's start with matters in parky ring um first of all colin we have we have to ask i haven't spoken to you what do you think about the fact the match is in parky ring uh, i don't think any of us are kidding ourselves thinking it's going to make a great difference to the result but do you think cork are right to take their stance um do you think it's going to make a little bit of difference and what was the reaction down in Kerry? Yeah, and look, first of all, I think they're 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 right in taking their stance. They have to fight for what they, they want. It's a home it's a home game for them. But look, from my viewpoint, I miss the days of forty thousand in Killarney and fifty thousand maybe in Parky Heave and those big days. And look, Jor would have commentated in a lot of those games. So um I always feel Kerry Cork Championship games should be in Killarney or Parky Heave. That's my personal view. But look, I can see why Cork went down the route they did. Um, look, at the end of the day, GA stadiums are for Gaelic games, in my opinion. I don't have an issue with stadiums trying to maximise revenue, which obviously Parker Keeve have to try and do, given the cost of the stadium. But for me, um, the aura of Cork Kerry games, even though it's 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 not it's probably not there at the moment because it, it hasn't been so it hasn't been as competitive. But the buzz of Cork and Killarney and Park. In particularly Parky Keeve, that's where Cork and Kerry belong, in my opinion. But look, on this occasion, Kerry have agreed to go to Parky Reen, and I like like that. I'm not going. I don't think it's going to be a game changer in terms of the result of the match. But um, look, Cork Cork have got their way. So look, you can see why they fought their corner. The talk in Kerry, I think the the upsetting thing in Kerry was it took so long to get to a decision, and it was up and down, and Munster Council and the GA were all involved. And nobody seemed to could agree on anything. That's where the disappointment, I think, for from the players and Jack O'Connor referenced it in, in, in an interview he did on Monday as well, that they just want the closure and know where to play the match. So um yeah, look, I am not sure maybe Rory might know the attendance. Is it nine or eleven thousand on 11. Saturday night? Yeah, 11. 11. yeah, yeah. yeah. And and, and so, not so, and not and not sold out by any means yet. Yeah, yeah. not not I I talking to people here, a lot of them are um there isn't huge, huge demand for tickets, you know. So, look, that maybe tells the story where the rivalry has dropped off in the last number of years because of the lack of competitiveness. But um, it's disappointing to see because Kerry Cork, and I, and certainly when I was growing up, was one of the showcase events of the year on the GA calendar, and um, it has fallen a long way. Yeah. Jerry, you, as Colin mentioned, you, you commentated on probably more of these matches than most of us have watched on television at this stage and it is it like I've no problem with Parky Ring. I think it's quite a nice little nice little ground but that's what it is it's a nice little ground and tragically it's probably going to be more than big enough for this match now and considering the occasions that you've attended over the years between these two teams um it is a little bit sad isn't it it's a great shame it's a great shame I don't think Parky Reen is any advantage to Cork by the way um, if you go back um, six years, go back to 2016, when their current woes, in my view, really happened. They were playing in the National League in 2016 in Porky Reen against Ross Common, and they lost that day by four goals and 25 points to three goals and 10. Now, four goals and 25 points scored by Ross Common, that's a hurling score. And that scoreline that they conceded that day was so great, it caused them to be relegated from Division 1 at the end of that year. And they've kept on slipping ever since. And I think that's where it all started for them. Um, Porky Arena is a big pitch, by the way. Mm. It's not a small pitch. Um, it's the old Flower Lodge where uh, League of Ireland matches were played. Cork Ibernians played there. They were in, was, there was once a, an Irish international soccer match played there between Ireland and Spain in 1985. It's the surrounds that are 
uh, small in mm. size, etc. That gives it its compact uh, dimension. But I don't think it's any great advantage whatsoever to Cork. They made their, their stand, as, as Colin was saying, but the truth of the matter is you're hoping, uh, if you're a Cork person, that they give a good account of themselves, and that's probably as far as it goes for Saturday. Yeah, um, obviously, Roy, you know, they're... John Cleary has has stepped in there now as, as caretaker manager or what what whatever the phrase is you know and he's he's asking the players to kind of stand up and 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 show their identity um not to be cruel but from the outside looking in when that's kind of you know when when, when that's the clarion call it it, it often it, it it doesn't it doesn't sound great if you know what I mean it's kind of like well let's let's hope our you know our corkness and our pride, etc., can carry us through here. That's that's probably not enough against the scary team. Look, I, the, the, even if Cork had a good side, even if they had, even if they were at the peak of their powers, they'd have it all to do on Saturday. This is a this is a really good carry team. The only thing they're missing, as we know, is the big one, which I I'm on record from the very very start of the year before the league even began saying they'll take that box as well this year. Um, so they were, they, were, they were going to be up against it regardless of what was going to happen. I think like they have as weak a panel of players than you factor in the injuries um, that they've had for probably, I don't, know how, I don't know how far back you'd have to go for a weaker Cork team. The one thing I'd say from John Cleary's perspective is he'd be slightly more pragmatic, I think, than maybe Keith Rickon was. Now I know Keith has been in with the lads; like he hasn't, be, he hasn't just disappeared off the face of a cliff. In, and we do wish him well. Um, the, the man is, um, he's got his health issues, and you know we wish him every, 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 every good wish, and just hope he can get back on his feet. But um, he has been in, and he's been talking to the lads. I think the difference between him, his approach which would be slightly more laissez-faire, let's go and have a cut. Um, I don't think Cleary is that type. I think he'll have a very definitive plan. Now, what I'd be slightly uh, nervous about is if we try and go out and stifle. I just don't think it's in Cork football psyche. Certainly not the current. I'd, we've tried packing defences, playing 14, 15 behind the ball. We've tried that before and we've still got our arses handed to us. So I'm not so sure if you can do that, if that's going to work in terms of keeping the score down. I think a few things is like, look, you are going to have to do and, and one, sorry, one final point in terms of Cork's attitude and their approach on Saturday. I wouldn't necessarily underestimate their ability to rise to the challenge from time mm. to time playing Kerry. I think if there's anything in them at all, I think it'll probably come out fighting their backs tooth and nail, give it everything, get it. Like if you go back to two years ago, you know, Ty Cockery, Sean Meehan, they were flying into tackles, hitting everything that moved. And I think it played a key role really in maybe putting them in a position whereby they were able to nick it with that marking goal at the finish. I think if they bring the same attitude and the same sense of spirit, and I think they can make the game maybe more competitive than people are giving them credit for. Um, the venue, as Jar said, I'm not entirely sure if it's that much of an advantage. They do train there. I think all club, car club championship matches are played there. Getting access to Parky Cueve, by the way, has proven a big, huge problem for both all intercounty teams currently because they couldn't get tickets now. Well, what we have to remember is <laughs> Parky Cueve isn't effectively own, owned. Or well, look, I don't know who the ownership, but it isn't run by the car county board mm. really anymore. You know, it's been run kind of a, a, at a more central level, so it's difficult to get access to your own stadium at times. So maybe that was part of the reason why they said, well, if that's not our stadium, we'll play in the ground that we do have control over. And there might've been a bit of a two fingers there. And um, they now have to go and back it up on Saturday night. And do I see them making it competitive? Probably not. Uh, I, I don't know what, yeah. competitive People. could be getting within six points of yeah Kerry. yeah like if, if if they manage that but like i suppose the, the worry jar is when you look at it 
I mean, Cox injuries are still quite severe. There's a doubt around Sean Powter. We don't know yet or in relation to Ty Corkery. We know Killian O'Hanlon is back training. Liam O'Donovan is back training, but both neither likely to make it in time for Saturday night, whereas Kerry are nearly reporting a clean bill of health. I know mm-hmm. Sean O'Shea is back fit. Uh, David Moran is fully fit. Ockham Bohr is fully fit. Mm-hmm. And... Um, is Paul Murphy fit as well, Cullum? Is he, if, if not, he's fairly close, Rory, yeah. So they're, they're, so, they're, they're as good a shape as they can be. Yeah, yeah so yeah. he's a, so, so Jack O'Connor is more or less dealing from a full deck. Yeah, look, look sport can be funny. In, in times gone by, as we said, the sight of a Kerry jersey should be enough to, you know, inspire Cork to yeah, pay better than, than, they, than, they, than they, maybe they're giving credit yeah. for. But I mean, look, hope isn't a strategy, and that's about all we have to cling on to. No going into Saturday. Night. Your clarion call of sport is funny sometimes isn't great either. No, uh, no. <laughs> Colum, um, no. I wonder, you know, the you know the lads talk about kind of the the sight of a Kerry jersey kind of rousing mm. something in Cork. I wonder is the feeling mutual there still, or uh, are Cork for Kerry now? just a, another stepping stone or is there still a feeling among a squad of Kerry players that this is a big game this is one we can't lose this is this is our old rivals etc look I think the, the rivalry is still there but it's just not, not as competitive so look is it a stepping stone for Kerry perhaps it is at the moment but that that will change again it's it's a far cry from I remember days of going to Park Heave, the old Park Heave, when you had the small dressing rooms and you had to get through the crowd coming through the tunnel. And you were given and you room. were and you were given the very small dressing rooms. We were given, <laughs> and, and, and one of my favourite memories, Roy, was Cork were so nice to us that even in the middle of the summer they turned on the heat at halftime. <laughs> <the dressing rooms. laughs> you know, so, do you know what was great about those old Park Heave dressing rooms? Because I, I I I obviously I used to sell programs when I was a kid, and I'm like I'm in going. And going to Cork and Kerry clashes since, like as I said, going back to the early eighties, um, and it was the fact that you had to uh, the dressing rooms were across the tunnel, across so the concourse, came, yeah. yeah. So when you came out of the dressing rooms, you, you actually had to, you had to, you had to jog through all of the crowd who were basically milling around and. There could be all sorts said. There, you know, there'd be scalps thrown. They're all oh, listen. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was an absolute shithole. Let's be perfectly honest. But it was, uh... it, was it, it was just dated, Rory. And I, I have, a, yeah. I have a good story. I got, remember, I got a <clears throat> right just before half time. I got, I got, I went down soft enough, maybe, but I got a free in the sideline, and a fella gave me. A belly full of it and you were a cheeky so-and-so I don't think I could say it on this podcast but, <laughs> um, but by the time we had got to the tunnel to go into the dressing room he was waiting for me and being held back by the guards as well so um, all, all, all great banter but that's that's probably what you miss about the clashes and, 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 and all that sort of stuff but um, just I think look if you look at the league form Kerry Kerry in my opinion won Division 1 comfortably enough Cork were probably going the other way in Division 2 Um Injury, injury wise, carrier better shape, quality wise, the team. So look, Pace, it's going to be difficult. It's going power, to be difficult. Yeah, mid midfield is a big issue. Cork's kick out is a big issue. Like, there's what team will Cork even pick? Could you pick the Cork fifteen? No, no but, chance. Not no a chance. Pop. You wouldn't. You don't no, know who's no. going to play. Yeah. You know. So now the the only thing, Rory, I would say is look, John, you, as you said, John Cleary is kind of um, taken taken on from Keith, who's had to take a step a step back. I think. The, the thing that I'd be looking for if I was a Cork, Cork supporter would be look the fact that they've stuck together on the Parky Arena piece can that galvanise them and maybe us versus the world a little bit of an approach and also I know you're saying that they, they don't generally set up too defensively or, or structurally but perhaps John might be able to drill that into them over the last six weeks he said six yeah. weeks to prepare yeah. they had a, a fair idea that it was going to be in Parky Arena so I think I, th- I think certainly you can make them competitive up to a point I think maybe maybe for like I'm thinking 45-50 minutes if they if they can be in there I don't I like when Kerry spring the bench I just I don't think Cork will have any of the answers and that's why look I think I think I think somewhere between 7 and 10 points is kind of what I'm looking at in terms of a Kerry victory I don't think that's going to be an absolute mauling or anything like that I think mm. they, Cork, Cork can set themselves up to be the, to, to be to be structured in a way that they can curtail Kerry for a while but eventually that the, the, the floodgates will open a little bit and Kerry will probably run out comfortable win- winners I think that's that if if that's if I were John Cleary maybe that's what I would be just to stifle them a little bit 
for, and maybe stay in the game for as long as you can. Eventually, you might you might run out of gas, but that would be my approach if I was John Cleary. Yeah, I think people should remember, uh, Mikey, that John Cleary is probably the manager that a lot of people down in Cork expected to be boss of the team, maybe going back seven, eight years ago, maybe more. Well, he, very, like, Jared, it would be f- probably fair to, would it be fair to say, Jared, that he should have maybe taken over after Conor Cunahan in 2013? Yes, yes exactly. Um, various issued, issues were mentioned at that stage. Um, the politics wasn't right anyway, and John was overlooked. Um, I think it was a great shame he was overlooked, by the way. He had a very successful underage career, very successful under-21 manager with Cork. I mean, he was the one everybody, I think, in football down here expected would take over. And I remember talking to him at that stage. I think he was a bit disillusioned by the whole thing. And uh, he had a daughter playing with the women's uh, football team and he did a bit of coaching there as well. And he was reluctant to get back involved. And it's by sheer default in a way that he came in as uh, Keith Rickens' coach and then Keith unable to continue. I think they deserve some credit as well for staying out of Division 3. I know that's not on the agenda today, but (laughs) they won their last two matches. It would have been a disaster for Cork football had they slid back down into 3 again. And it it looked quite possible for a while, Ger. You could have have written off this year and written off next year if that had happened. At least now they have a basis upon which they can build. But I think Colin is absolutely right. Um, seven to ten points. Yeah, it's possible. This is a very, very good Kerry team. Mm-hmm. Cork are going to be experimental. There's a, there's, it's not a quirk, but it, it, it's, it's something to, to note, Colm, because I, I think for a lot of neutrals at the moment, watching Kerry, the great pleasure of it is watching David Clifford. Let's, let's pretend it's not. He's, uh, he's, the, he's the heir to the uh, great, great entertainer throne that you sat in yourself there for quite a few years. And I think neutrals like to watch David Clifford play football. Um, he doesn't. He's, he's never set the world alight against Cork. Uh, Declan Welly uh, will have a piece on the RT website this weekend looking at it. I, um, like he was kept scoreless from play by Sean Meehan last year, which was a remarkable achievement. I think in his games against Cork, he's got 11 points thus far, mm. which given his scoring rate of about four to five points per game on average, it isn't isn't fantastic. You know, it's it's probably it's a bit early in his career to say that Cork have a hoodoo over him. But it, it, like it's just noteworthy because it's David Clifford, you know. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm, I'm delighted you brought that up, Mikey, because I don't think that'll last for, for too long more. Than <laughs> he's, he's, he's so good. He's going he's gonna to strike it hot. Look, he's an outstanding player. He's probably the most exciting player we've seen in, in some time. Um, I just love watching himself and Conor Callan. They're just so, such brilliant forwards and kind of so direct. He, he takes guys on. And I know Rory, we've cha- had chats about Rob. Conor Callaghan in terms of he doesn't he does he, he, I'd say if he gets a point he's disappointed he just wants to run at fellas and run over fellas to try and get goals Clifford is a little bit of a different player in terms oh, of very he's, different he's, yeah. he's he's very skillful he's around the, he hangs around the square he can see a pass he's he's very he's a very elegant player in terms mm. of the way he plays do you know, do you know what he's like Colin, you know, I, I, I know you I know you might like this I think he's like a combination of Morris Fitzgerald and Colin Cooper in that he's got the elegance and grace and balance of a Morris Fitz, yeah. but the trickery and the ingenuity and the vision, and obviously then, you know, the skill that you would have had too. You know, like I just think he's, he's just that he's he's incredible. He's an out oh, like I mean that's I think that's half the reason why people will still tune in in big numbers on Saturday Box. night because like he's. I mean, he's worth it. Look, he's he's, he's box his box office. There's no question about that. He has the X factor. He like Rory, you said people from other counties just tune in to watch him. They do. Um, but what I what I really he's got a very good temperament as well. And I think sometimes that gets overlooked. Where in games he misses chances and he'll try things that don't necessarily come off all the time. But it doesn't stop him. He goes again and he'll try it again. And um, look, there was that incident in the league final where O'Hora was giving him giving him a few words or whatever, like what he brushed it off and next like next ball, it was like just poking the bear. Clifford took off for the next ten minutes, and I don't know that he hit one three or one four. So look, he he's got all the game. He's difficult to stop. Perhaps teams at the moment are saying, look, we we'll nearly accept David Clifford getting five points against us because. You can manage that once, once he's once he's not getting one seven, one eight, one nine. You know, but um, he's the great player, and the the beauty for him now is that Kerry's squad is so strong. He's helped Paul Ganey seems to have found some form again. The league final, Tony Braston has come in. He's pushing for a place. Sean O'Shea has to come back in. So look, they couldn't be in better shape going into the going into the championship. And he's 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 the ice he's the icing on top. You know, he's the cherry on top of the team. So I think. 
Um, if they're if they're going to power on Rory as and as you mentioned at the start of the show, going on to win the All Ireland, he's going to be he's going to be the key man. But I think it'd be foolish just to concentrate on him. There's a, there's a lot of ammunition around the place as Big well. Time there is. Um, yeah. So and if they, if they if they can find form, so look, I'm just in, I'm just interested to see how they how they approach this weekend. I suppose Kerry have been caught two years ago against Cork and Parky Keeve. They were bitterly disappointed last year losing to Tyrone with all the, the COVID and moving of the match. So that left a sour taste. So I think this and Jack O'Connor has come in, new 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 manager. So I think um I think look they mean they mean business every year, but I think they know that this is this is a pivotal, vital year for them. Yeah. Um I don't I think we're we're all in agreement here on a Kerry win, so I won't ask for your predictions. Um I won't, no, I won't do I won't do that to you, lads. Um we'll move we'll move to matters uh, matters north um and a uh, Ulster semi final. Donegal and Cavan, which is a, a, a fixture. It's been the it's been the Ulster final twice in the last three years, obviously, and they're famously the uh, honors are even after the twenty twenty smash and grab. By by Cavan, I was just looking at it there, uh, Colin. Cavan's record now: they were beaten in the first round by Tyrone, All Ireland champions last year. But twenty nineteen, they beat Monaghan and Armagh before coming unstuck against Donegal in the final. And then obviously in twenty twenty, famously the uh, you know the no safety net knockout championship, they beat Monaghan, they beat Antrim, they beat Down, and they beat Donegal. Um, Cavan, they may not put Mickey may not put a massive. Massive um stock in the in the league, but by God, they're a hell of a championship team, aren't they? They are, and I think they play down their chances quite often as well, to be honest. And Nicky Graham saying, "Ah, sure, we're up against it," and Manans <laughs> and Tyrone's and things, and that's a that's a trickle of a line that comes quite often. But they don't fear anyone up there, Mikey. And that's what I admire about them that they'll they'll come into championship. They'll be written off by many many pundits, many many people around the country, but it doesn't seem to bother them. And they have good footballers, you know, and they're around like. I was looking at their team yesterday. They have a lot of experienced players. They're not like they're around five or six years now, so they have a bit of experience built up as well. And they've won some of those big games that you called out there. So I think um, Mickey Graham. I don't think they'll fear Donegal because look, Donegal were impressive against Armagh, but I think Cavan have their own good players. And I was trying to do some of the matchups with Killian, Killian Clark, pick up Michael Murphy, um, Jason McLaughlin, and Patrick Faulkner. Very good. Um, defensive player so they'll pick up I'm sure one of them will pick up Mac Priority so they can match up quite quite well um against Donegal but I suppose if you're if you're comparing on divisions and the gap Cavan won the division four. uh division four four, four final four, yeah. yeah yeah four final and Donegal were comfortable enough in division one so there there, there appears on paper to be a big gap but as we know in Ulster and as we seen last weekend that always tra- that, that that doesn't always transpire but you'd have to imagine Donegal going in after beating Armagh at home. They should be they should be in a strong position. Yeah, we 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 mention Donegal often on this podcast, Jer, and just like I think I think we want to like them. I think they have a lot of likable players. Mm. I think you know they're kind of a generation that there's players that you'd like to see succeed again. Um, likable manager. Not that all that stuff matters, but they seem to most people. I think they're kind of a team that we kind of you have a soft spot for, except they drive you mad because you don't know what you're getting. So the last day out against Armagh, they were excellent. They were very, they, they they were very professional. I suppose you would say they they won that match in a way that it needed to be won, and they did it very very well. Their forwards must be back on form. So you're thinking, ah, uh, yeah, the Cavan Division Four up to Division Three, they'll take them. But that's not the Donegal we've learned to <laughs> to yeah. love and loathe over the last couple of years. They often back up a very good performance with a bewildering one. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get over the fact that the one the match you were referencing a moment ago, the Ulster final played in the winter of 2020 against Cavan. I mean, they were raging hot favourites, having won the previous year, to go and do the job, but they failed lamentably, miserably on that day. I think it was up in Armagh that match was played. Um, they're they're such a funny team. Even going into the game against Armagh two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Opinion was divided. Um, a lot of people said they fancy this Armagh team to go do the business. Now, okay, they were missing a couple of players, but nonetheless, Donegal did exactly what was required of them. They still have Michael Murphy, McBrearty, and so on. Michael Langan's a fine player as well. Mm. The one thing I've often felt about Mikey in those years, going right back through the generations, in those years when 
the Ulster, the All Ireland semi final was going to be competed between the Connacht champions and the Ulster champions. I always felt it's an extra special year for teams like Donegal in this instance and Galway as well, of course. Great opportunity, good choice. Because it's a great yeah. opportunity because you're going to have Kerry and Dublin, I imagine, playing in one All Ireland semi final. So getting to the final is a marvellous, marvellous boost for any team. And the prospect this year is very ripe for Johnny Gall. And therefore, if you get to the final, as we saw from last year, when I fancied Mayo to win, anything can happen. So I think it's given them all a major lift. It's a shot on the arm, the fact that they know now that they're within a couple of stages of possibly getting to the big game itself, now being played in July. I think this Johnny Gall team is a decent team. Uh, a lot of good background, good manager, Declan Bonner has changed the style somewhat. He's uh, refined it as well. I think they've got lots and lots of really good players still. Uh, you mm -hmm. may remember uh, we did uh, a league match between Donegal and Tyrone, which we covered live on mm -hmm. RTTV. They were excellent that night. They were really, really the good that half, night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you highlighted Rory uh, uh, last week Colm O'Rourke's fairly uh, acerbic um, kind of analysis of, of Mayo uh, you know they don't kick the ball they're and too they're predictable, predictable. Yeah. Um, the same charge could be levelled at Donegal at times you could say they run the ball constantly don't really kick it that much uh, I think Colm Cooper actually uh, on, on, a, on a particular league Sunday what's Donegal's plan A run the ball and I said well what's their plan B Colm run the ball harder like but it's 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 uh, yeah I like it's, I don't know whether you mentioned it there Mikey there's loads of like, like Donegal have a great likability there's loads of likability mm. about them their players their management you have a couple of real uh, swashbuckling inside forwards and McBrearty. Everyone loves Michael Murphy. But it's just, I suppose, trust. Can you trust them to back up? Like they do kind of, they can, they can, they can flitter from absolutely outstanding to bang average and within one game, within one half of a game, you know, they can. So it's just a case of whether or not now they can, because I'd say they had a, Bit of a bee in their bonnet. I thought they played with a real spite against Armagh the last day, and it's just whether or not they can carry that. Does that will that sustain them going into the next match? I think it may may very well do. Like I mean, the cruel way to lose that Ulster final in twenty twenty will surely be at the back of a lot of their players' minds, is certainly their manager, and you'd imagine that would be um, a significant motivation and a, a particular drive for them to go out and just really show that there's a bit of a golf in class between the two teams and get a good job done, win the game comfortably. Now, that's famous last words because Cavan are similar to Donegal in that you, you, you don't know what you're going to get from Cavan, you know? Like, I mean, a lot of people actually gave Antrim a sniff the last day and, you know, the game was probably over after 20 minutes. So, look, I think it might be competitive, Donegal, to pull away handy enough in the end. How do you see it going, Colin? Yeah, um, just just a word on Donegal there. My and it's very similar to to what the lads are saying. It's they're 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 fantastic to watch at times, but can you trust them all the time? I'm not sure. They've lost, like I remember, over in nearly three years in a row, they, they lost to Tyrone in, in a Super Eight game in mm -hmm. Bally Buffet. That's they home, lost yeah. to Mayo and Castlebar to qualify. All these games to get into the semi final, um, and obviously you the Cavan game. So they're a difficult gang to trust. But look on the face of it, I think. The, on the balance of it, they, you would have to go for Donegal, and I think, as Rory said, you're probably going to see them pull away. Even though Kevin, if Paddy Lynch and Garrod McKeon and strike it hot, they can give them problems. But that's that's a big if as well. And based on hot, what we saw from Donegal the last day, they seem to. Brendan McCall has come in; he's done well, you know. Uh, Pat Morgan is doing well, so they seem to start to out their defence somewhat. And look, we know what they can do when they're going forward. I, similar to Joe, I love like Michael Langan. Um, he's playing number 12 at the moment. He can play midfield. He's a very talented guy. Sometimes I watch him and I want to shake him because I think there's so much more under the bonnet that we don't see. But I'm hoping we get to see that um, this, this weekend and maybe for the rest of the championship. But look, on the face of it, I think Donegal are, are certainly five or six points ahead of Cavan. And I'm, I am I would be expecting we'll see that on, on, on the weekend. Yeah. Jerry, do you give us any chance for shock here? 
Uh, I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. I think uh, Cavan slipping down into Division 4 was disastrous, quite honestly. I know there were celebrations after they won the Ulster title, got to an Ireland semi at the end of 2020. And then clearly their concentration wasn't on the league the following year. And then the repercussions are you, you start out this year, 2022, playing against inferior opposition. And that's what you get down in Division 4. It's no preparation for taking on a Division 1 team. I think they'll be spirited. They have, as uh, Colin was mentioned there, the likes of Garrod McKiernan uh, in their ranks, scored a fine goal against Antrim the last day out. They're capable of putting up a decent score, but I don't see them overhauling Donegal, for whom a lot of the players now must be thinking in terms of, you know, Murphy is 32, I think. McBrady is pushing on as well. Uh, and... They, they've got to be saying to themselves, look, if we're serious contenders for another All-Ireland, it's got to be this year, really. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, as people know, I'm, I'm a big fan of an underdog, but I'm, 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 I'm even I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back Donegal here. So uh, rush to the bookies, get a lot of money on Cavan because uh, <laughs> for, 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 for wise and not so wise men have backed Donegal. This is exactly when Donegal decide to do a Donegal. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of underdogs, there's one game left um, below in Salt Hill, uh, the scene of the handshake. There's a, another major event happening there this weekend as Galway take on Leitrim. Um, I have a lot of friends from Leitrim, and I know a lot of them travelling down to this match. And the thing I love about Leitrim people is they're not even travelling in hope. They're just going because it's 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 the day out. And I suppose they're almost the argument column for the provincial championships. This is not patronising them. They know I'm not patronising them. They don't expect to win the match. They just go down and expect to cheer on their team and hope it's respectable. Um, but uh, you can't make a case for them to win the game. I think everybody watching this game is just seeing, right, what, you know, how are Galway going to react to, you know, getting over the big, the big hump. Now they've got the pothole and then they've got another big hump in the final. So what do they do? Do they, you know, what are they going to, are they going to try and develop some, something here or are they just going to try and tick a box similar to you i was chatting to some leitrim lads last weekend and incredibly passionate ga people and um for look obviously population wise they don't have the strength and depth of the other counties but by god they love their football but similarly they're they're coming down to galway they're hoping for a good showing but not expecting to win the match i think that's that's where they are there's too much of a gap between the teams um from a galway point of view i think galway played okay against against I don't think they were brilliant against Mayo I think Mayo were a good bit off the pace and even I think structurally Galway probably got it right they set up a bit defensive I know from working with Keane O'Neill he probably had a had a role to play there in the way they set up and they got the scores when they needed them Shane Walsh kicked two big frees in the second half and they got off to a good start at the start of the game um, but Mayo if Mayo had another five minutes in that match they might they might have caught Galway so I think Galway are not the finished article they'll still be too, far too strong for Leitrim this weekend but um, a little bit like Donegal you don't know what you're going to get with Galway either mm -hmm. you know and there's days I think that Comer and Shane Walsh are unmarkable and then there's days that I didn't even know they were playing so I still try to I still kind of think that they're trying to find the right entity really and trying to get the best out of it they had to do a job in Castle Barn they did it really well they, I think they they snuffed out Mayo and didn't allow them much space for, for most of the game and but you would have to say Mayo were pretty pathetic as well on the day so um, it's difficult to see where Galway are they'll be too strong for Leitrim this weekend but I think maybe in the background Ross Common might be licking their lips a little bit here as well you know so um, but for this weekend Galway will be will be 10 points or more better than Leitrim I think yeah, where where do you see Galway as as being, Jer? Because uh, I I've put my I've put my uh, my hat on the I put my neck on the block here. I'm actually I've I've backed them to win the All Ireland, which is obviously bonkers. But my my point my my logic here is kind of what Colum says there. When their best players are at their best, they're magnificent. Um, and if they kind of get their defensive house in order, which they are doing under Keane O'Neill, that can give them the basis. So. It's obviously a bonkers prediction, but it's not completely devoid of sense, uh, is my opinion. I'm just wondering where you see them at. Stranger things have happened. Um, Thanks, Ger. I, <laughs> <I, laughs> I see them as contenders, Mikey. I do see them as contenders. But again, a bit like our chat about Donegal previously, they're highly unpredictable. I mean, I thought they were going to be contenders for all Ireland honours going back maybe three, four years ago. Uh, and it never materialised. And I've, I've been very disappointed with them in the last year or so. 
last year's Connacht final played in Croke Park was a pretty shocking performance by them. Um, they did just enough to get over Mayo this time. Um, I see them as potential All Ireland semi finalists. Um, that's where I, I would go. Um, so they will have what they, they should have Roscommon in the in the Connacht final. That should them see them through to a quarter final. Up against a Leitrim team. Now I'm one of those guys who was in was it where was I? I was in the it was played in the Hyde, wasn't it? Yeah, the Hyde in 1994 when Leitrim won their last Connacht title, beating Mayo. Um, and I remember at that time the the joy and the occasion, uh, the celebration. I remember talking to somebody in the build up to it and I'm saying, is this the greatest thing ever? He says, yeah, since we won the three in a row. And I said, um, pardon, when, when, when did you win the, the three in a row with Leitrim? Oh, that was the year we won three challenge matches. And, <laughs> oh, play, they do love their football, but there's no doubt they're going to be out of their depth in Salt Hill this Sunday. Yeah. No question. One thing, one thing, Mikey, just one thing, maybe, you, I don't know if it's mitigating circumstances, or maybe they were just a victim of bad timing. Uh, they, they got to, that Galway team got to an All-Ireland semi-final in 2018. Look, they did okay against Dublin for large parts. Vakoma got a great goal early on. and um, Now, Dublin pulled away easily enough in the end. But you felt that like Galway kind of got a good glimpse of the level that they needed to get to. And if you fast forward to the 2019 National League, the following year, they were pulling up trees. They destroyed Tyrone. Um, I think the game was in June. They were absolutely humming. And of course, we all know what happened next. So basically the world went into pause effectively for the best part of two years. And I'm just wondering, did that stunt their development somewhat? Because by the time they came back, I think their very first match back when we all emerged from COVID, they went down to Killarney or Tralee and got a uh, hose. Was, was it Mayo, was it? I got, they played Mayo, yeah. They was got, it in, in, in June, I think. Mayo yeah, in June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and they got hammered there. Hammered, yes, yeah. And, and, and I'm just wondering, I don't know whether or not that might have played a part in stalling their momentum, their development. And it only kind of seems to be now that they are starting to reasserting themselves and finding their feet again. But look, the reality is they'll probably learn very little on Sunday. And you'd imagine they'll, you know, be setting, setting themselves up for a Connacht final. But I'm just wondering, did that play a part? They look to me like a coming team in 2018. Mm. And then obviously global events took over. Yeah. Um, OK, well, look, I won't lie and say it's the most riveting weekend of football we have, but we do have three provincial semifinals. And sure, that's not, that's not to be sneezed at. So thank you to Colm. We'll let you go. And we're going to get Anthony Daly in here now to look ahead to the one hurling match we have for the weekend. Thanks very much, Colm. Cheers. Cheers, lads. Welcome back. We've been joined by Anthony Daly. How are you doing, Dela? I'm all right, Mike. Lovely bright morning down here in Clare. Good stuff. We got Everything you. Everything is bright and clear at the moment, Mike. Oh, I know, isn't it? The sun yeah. is shining. I'd say, say your tea tastes better. I'd say, yeah. I'd say the 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 pints are settling quicker in the bar. I'd say <laughs> everything's rosy. The Joke golf green. class and the golf classic is on today, is it, Dela? So there'll yeah. be a, there'll be a health there'll be a healthy attendance, I'd imagine, across the board. <laughs> a few a few notable teams arriving, all right, in Dunbeg later on, Rory. <laughs> ah, brilliant, yeah. Jackie's heading down, I think, is he? And he is, Mark he and a few others, fair play. Yeah, yeah. Jer, Jer, this is this, this is unseemly, Jer, isn't it? This this Clare man coming on with such a sunny disposition with the way things the way they are down in the Rebel County. Well, my mother came from Dunbeg, so I'm, I'm interested in everything that he's saying, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, yeah um, I guess down here in Cork at the present time, uh, there's a post-mortem going on. It's still going on and will continue to go on, I suppose, until the Waterford match. Um, they were well and truly taken to the cleaners last weekend. Uh, they can have no excuses whatsoever. Claire were vastly superior. Um, vastly superior. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Cork looked confused to me. You were they there, Joe. You were there for radio, were you? Yeah, yeah. They seemed confused as to what they were meant to be doing, how they were meant to be playing, where they were meant to be set up and how they were meant to be structured. And I found that very strange considering they've been together as a group. I mean, they got to the All-Ireland final last year, uh, had a very good league campaign. And now you're beginning to say to yourself, what good was that league campaign? Were they truly tested at that stage? 
You saw where Limerick finished up. You saw where Clare finished up. Both of those teams got one win and one draw during the league, but it sufficed because their 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 minds, their eyes were were on the championship, not yeah. on the league. Well, Clare were outstanding, though, Joe, weren't they? Absolutely outstanding. They're a terrific team. Um, I had not expected them to be as good. If you were to put me to the pin of my collar and say, rate the five teams in Munster before the start of the championship, I think they would have been fifth. Mm. I think Tip would probably have been fourth, Cork maybe uh, in, in third place with Waterford and Limerick, obviously, in prime positions. But they have surpassed everything. And I think a lot of that is down to the management of Brian Lohan, first of all, that steady hand of his, and the reappearance of Peter Duggan and, and uh, Shane O'Donnell as well. I mean, they're tremendous players. Uh, to have those two forwards back in there. And now we hear maybe there's a possibility that uh, one or two others will become available for the next match that they've got. So they're, they're a part to be reckoned with. They're in there. They're, 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 in, they're in there in the hunt for the, for the championship. I mean, they could go all the way, possibly semi-finalists in the all Ireland. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe beyond it. Yeah. So narr- it, was, it was a narrative to kind of surprise me, lads. I, I thought the league was the league this year. It was exceptionally early Odds. because, you know, yeah, it was just I, I, I didn't get it. And I thought with Dougie back, with Shane O'Donnell back, with John Conlon having a year under his belt at centre back, um, Rory Hayes a year older, Colin Malone, the farm he was in. And so I, I just didn't get I I just thought a quick glance back to last year. Um, could have beaten Tip in Munster in a semi-final that the controversial black card penalty probably swung and Tony Kelly credit to Patrick Collins for a magnificent save from Tolly Kenny last puck of the ball in the qualifiers and I, I thought Clare were banged there and with the two boys back it was a huge chance for Clare and I, I, I felt they'd definitely be in the three yeah and they look, tell us what there's there's good news coming out of the, the camp the, the the little leaks and the little bits you get to hear there's a few more on the way back is there well, the little leaks is right, Mike, because it's desperate hard to, to to hear anything. But you know, a small little bit. Um, I suppose in that we on my own club would have played Scarif last weekend and met Mark Rogers at the game just in the, in the civvies, obviously, and uh, he probably won't be ready. He said for Limerick, but there was a good chance maybe that Shane Meehan and David Reedy would be ready. And um, although he won't be ready for any of these next two games, Ed McCarthy, I think, is back in full training. So. That one is real eye opener, like because if you looked at the bench on on last Sunday, it was fairly treadbare. I think for forwards, you know, I mean, mm. in fairness to Shani and and Donald McMahon, they came in and they gave it everything because we were down to fourteen at that stage. It was tough going. So, um, look at it. That's encouraging because I think Clare are playing a, a fantastic running game, and the guys I've mentioned earlier are real runners. Like that's their game. Yeah. They're on the ball and moving. And uh, Lucas, we're up against the big two now, I suppose, which is unusual to say in Munster. Sorry to the two cockmen on board here. But uh, it is like they're, they're the two that were touted as being the definites to be in the three and which of the other three teams. like, And it looks like clear at the moment, but there's a bit, bit to be done. Yeah. Well, would you say, but Delo, would you say like the ambition has shifted somewhat in Clare in that maybe be pre-championship, people would have said, look, we'll just be happy to get out of the group. Would you think now like that there's a there's a feeling, listen, we could win something here, whether it's a Munster title, which I think, you know, you're the longest stretch going back to 98, I think, currently. And then obviously, um, who knows after that? Like, do you, do you, is there a feeling that maybe there's more for us than just maybe just getting out of the group? Yeah, well, I'd say they're very well grounded, Rory, with, with Brian and, and, and the crew uh, toward year and job and, and progressively getting better. So I'd say... Things are very much focused just on the Limerick game. But I think you, you can't help but think this is exciting here. And uh, I was talking to one of the players' dads, uh, an, old, an old comrade of mine, and um, so it probably narrows it down. Jim <laughs> <laughs> uh, McInerney, I was down to Jim like, just, you know, that, 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 like they are excited and they are feeling that there's something happening here. So, yeah, shades mm-hmm. of um, maybe sometime in the 90s. But... I, t- I, tell you who, I tell you one player again, and like the, these players always tend to get overlooked to. Like yeah, he had a he had a little bit of a boo boo. I think in was it one of the league games, or no, it was actually against uh, Tipperary where uh, the ball just kind of dropped in through his fingers. But like, and that can knock a goalkeeper's confidence. But I thought Ivor Quilligan 
Is it Ever or Ever? How do you pronounce it? Ever. It's either or either. Ever, we say, yeah. 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 She's like, like, I think in terms of like, made an unbelievable couple of saves, mm. his distribution is top class. You know, normally if you make a boo boo like that, it can really, really um, hamper a goalkeeper's confidence. I think he's right up there now as well yeah. in terms of, you know. Yeah, his yeah. handling was really good and the, the couple of saves, as you said, Rory, but um, the big thing for me is the puck outs just puck really outs, went up yeah. to the roof within the space of a week, you know. He can go long, he can go yeah. short, very accurate, very crisp. His trajectories are good. He's not just loop lamping it up high, you know. So Cork midfielders and halfbacks totally deciding they don't have to mark their men for a clear puck out. <laughs> that does help, right. though. <laughs> um, but does, it does help the keeper look good, all right. Um, Ger, it's, it's, it's a good thing for every, not not just for a very smug looking Anthony Daly there, but for the whole hurling like uh, community, shall we say, it is great that Clare have shown up because, you know, to think of the Munster Championship as a two-horse race in the round robin era would be kind of depressing. It, would be, it wouldn't be it would be doing it justice. Um, but I suppose the thing for Clare is now, as I think I made the, made the uh, comparison on Monday, it's a little bit like Derry in Division 2 this year. The fixture list, they've kind of been eased into the, into the Championship in, in that they've had the minnows of Tipperary and Cork first. Um, so their final, <laughs> <laughs> their, their final two games against Limerick and Waterford are going to be telling, but then if Limerick do the business this weekend, Limerick could have their flip flops on when they go to Ennis. So it could be kind again for Clare, couldn't it? It could be. Um, well, if we're talking about Limerick, if we're going on that far at this stage. Oh, we have to, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Um, Limerick are in, in such a wonderful position at the present time. Um, one win out of the next two will guarantee them that they are probably in the Munster final, yep. uh, certainly qualified. No question is here what do Limerick want to do do they really want to win the Munster Championship certainly it would help the shorter route that they have to the All-Ireland final which is their prime target the better for them I mean they don't want to go through uh, a preliminary quarter final by finishing third or anything like that they're already sustaining quite a few injuries mm. we saw uh, Kean Lynch going off and they've lost one or two others as well and they, they can't afford even a great panel of players like Limerick, they can't afford to be losing their, their main leaders in that team. So I think they will want to get the job done with the minimum of us, rather like the philosophy they had, I think, for the league. It was a case of, we'll stay in Division 1, we'll do what we have to do, but our target is the championship at all times. Mm -hmm. So I, I think where we're looking ahead to, to this coming game on Sunday, which is against Tipperary, of course, in, in uh, Limerick's uh, Gaelic Park, um, the point here is, how badly do they want to win that? Do they want to just do the minimum? And does that then give Tipperary a possible in? Could they possibly, possibly take Limerick, even though it'll be completely against the odds? Yeah, well, we, we know Rory's theory on that is that this is, this, this, this is uh, more than two points for Limerick. This, this is personal. This is um, seeking revenge for that All-Ireland semi-final. And you're kind of nodding your head there, Dalo. You, do you think uh, Limerick are going to kind of come out a little bit like uh, some characters from Gladiator here on, on Sunday? Yeah, well, I, I don't know what I'll semi-final, Mike. You mean, but... It, I... 2009, Dalo, when the, the day that um, Justin was What's over the, Limerick the and, Liam, and Liam was over Tip and they gave Tip, Tipperary gave Limerick an absolute reddening in Crow no, Park he, and John yeah. Kiley that day by all accounts, John has admitted this. That was the day that John Kiley said, well, I'm not standing for this. And he got back involved and I think he might have taken over a Limerick minor team or a Limerick underage team. And sure, look, as we say, the rest is history. But I'd say that particular day still, that will certainly be sticking in his head I'd imagine as they face into Sunday should Tipperary be coming up looking for any sort of uh, any sort of leniency I don't think they're going to be getting it but I don't think Tipper going in completely divide of hope either oh god I do oh Jesus Dalo yeah. come on Dalo come on talk some sense into him here Jason Ford now is not <laughs> like this Tipperary team without Jason Ford. And I know John McGrath isn't exactly central anymore, but Christ, he could pop up with a goal and no Jason Ford. And obviously, what's wrong with Jason Ford? Sorry, I missed that. Mike. He, uh, he, 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 there was a press release yesterday. And they, they, he's out. They haven't they haven't said why. They just said he's going to miss the game with a. Uh, uh, and can, I, can, I, can I can I retract that earlier comment? No. Nope. <laughs> 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 
and Rory, <laughs> their, their, their new fullback, James Quigley, who, had, in fairness to him, you know, looked, looked he'd been acquitting against, himself quite well. Yeah. Water, he's been right? getting lots of practice, yeah. Yeah. he's out as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> where they're going to go, it's like I, I feel a bit for Colin Bonner, I have to say. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, so for a clear man to be feeling for Tipman now and the battle with Con <laughs> all the Bonners for a good few years and got tortured by them yeah. until eventually, we, I suppose, we got a bit of a, a foothold. Would he remind you of a, 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 of a small furry animal below in Clan Mel at this stage, Dave? Uh, he was, no, they're, they're well able to for the animals. Um, no, look, um, like Cullum took on the job, you, you would say, Mike, you know, full of hope, I suppose. And, and, you know, there was a lot of players, maybe that some people said Liam didn't give enough time to maybe, but Liam had a formula and Liam thought he'd win another All-Ireland and at halftime in last year's Munster final, we all thought Liam could have been 100% right to stick. But Cullum came in and I suppose there was a good bit of license to experiment but I'd say he he might have known Brendan wouldn't be there Brendan Maher but he probably thought Paddy be there Shemi Callan be there Bubbles be there John McGrath be there and now the news on on um, James Quigley and like Jason Ford I don't even I was trying to go through it late, late last night um, who's going to hit the freeze I don't know I'd say Noel McGrath is probably the most obvious one I know Jack Morris might hit him for Nina and that but he wouldn't have hit him much underage for, for Tip and Macchio might take him at club level, but wouldn't have hit him underage for, for Tip or for UCC. So that's, like, I mean, it's unbelievable. John McGrath would have been probably your second up free taker after Jason Ford. And John is obviously after having um, an Achilles surgery. So we, we wish him the best. I think he's a massive last Mike. I don't think he's, I think he was carrying a touch of that, you see, going into water. Mm. That's why we didn't see him until two minutes to go. And then they kind of had to gamble and play him against Clare. So for me, it's, it's, it's mad, like, and who are we going to see? Ger Brown obviously come in, come in and hit one three against Clare, very good. Um, Connor Stakel and probably uh, Connor Bow injured just before half time against Watford. How is he fixed? Because he looks an exciting. I'd say Bonner will be central to the to the thing uh, for Sunday. Bonner Maher, and he probably might have thought Bonner fifteen minutes. I'd say Bonner would be wearing eleven. Uh, I don't know any more than that now. This is yeah. my own hunch, but the curious thing. Of, Wonder, the curious yeah. thing, Anthony, for me was uh, Bonner was introduced at half time against Waterford ahead of John McGrath and one or two others. Now, that may well have been because John McGrath had a little bit of a niggle of an injury. But I was surprised then that he didn't get any game time whatsoever in the last match against Clare. So, as you say, he may well be in at number 11. The long range freeze, I think, will probably be taken by uh, Brian Hogan, the goalkeeper. Um, you have to say Jason Ford wasn't exactly setting the world on fire in the last two matches. Uh, I, I anyway. believe he was yeah. probably carrying a bit of an injury into those. Mm. Um, he was taken off against uh, Waterford and um, he, he didn't really distinguish himself against Clare. I think he's playing well, he was playing well below par. He's a big, huge loss, of course, because if it comes to some long range freeze where somebody with real ability and character could put them over the a Limerick crossbar. Well, you, you put your money on, on Jason Ford. I believe this match can go one of two ways. Either Limerick will come and destroy Tipperary. I mean, they're capable of scoring. They're capable of putting up a score of five or six goals and maybe 25 to 30 points. That's possible. On the other hand, do they need to do that? They've already had two very, very good victories. They needed to come out and make a statement against Cork. They did that. They needed to come out and play against their chief rivals as they are right now, Waterford. They did that. Do they need to continue with that very high tempo point, for the next yeah. two matches? In particular, this game. In particular, this one. Because I think the last one will be a local derby match, another rivalry against Clare. And Limerick-Clare matches take on a life of their own anyway, normally. So I believe if they take the foot off the pedal any little bit whatsoever, they may just give a slight in for Tipperary mm. to come up with. Not a surprise, but put, put in a decent performance. I, I We talked about this uh it was talked about on the Sunday game, actually, and we discussed it briefly on Monday in the Leinster Championship now how, you know, we've kind of got the Six Nations issue where Leash and, Le Leash and Westmead are playing the Italy role and the other team knows it's in their interests to to rack up a score. Um, you look at the Munster Hernan Championship table, Limerick have four points, Clare have four points, Waterford have, have two points. It's not beyond the realms of possibility to see those three ending up on six points. And in which case, Rory, score difference does come into it. And if John Kiley would like to take it easy in his final game against Clare or would like to remove all possibility of concern, knowing that, you know, a score difference, you know, 
racking up a 20, adding 20 points to his plus or minus here this weekend uh, is almost like an ex, having an extra point on the table should all the teams end up on level points. So um, I could see George point certainly that like conserving energy is a smart thing to do in this championship. But another smart thing to do is put yourself in an unassailable lead. And I think, yeah, and, and, and I, I, it's not an unreasonable point for Ger. And I was kind of thinking about it just before he made it in that, is, it, is this the game <clears throat> in, um, in which John Kiley may even be afforded the opportunity to give some of the, some of the more panel players a game and probably still win the match, you know, given the paucity of selection um depth that Tipperary now face given their injuries and retirements, etc. So like um and look they've got huge depth still. I mean we saw it there again last night in the under 20s and they've got plenty coming. Now Tipperary have a few I saw plenty last night. Like that was the first underage match that Tipperary have lost all year between minor and under 20. Like mm. they played seven or eight games I think across both age groups and Last night was the first game that they were beaten in. I think they have. There was a there was a young lad Leamy, I think, in full forward is a Jack Leamy, and there was another chap at midfield was a Creedon or Campion. Campion, sorry, excellent players. Now look, it's a big step up when you're in 18, 19 years of age. You're not going to be just thrown straight into the, I suppose, the tumble dryer of Munster Championship hurling, um, from a Tipperary perspective. But um, I think, yeah, going back to the original point, sorry, Mikey, the, in relation to scoring difference and all of that, look, I, I think Limerick will get the job done. I think they'll have their six points. They'll have a massive scoring average anyway on the back of the, the beaten Cork the first day out. So I don't necessarily see that kind of coming against them. And even if they were to go to Ennis on the last day out, and um, uh, or sorry, it's, it's the last day for them. It's, mm. not the, it's not the last day of the Munster Yeah, they have the last week off. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, like, I think they could probably, yeah, feet up cigars out, even if they are, like, regardless of what happens in Ennis, because I think they'll have their six points. Their scoring average would be pretty good. And they can just let everybody else fight it out for the right and the honor to play them, I think, in the Munster final. Effectively, I think what will end up happening is Waterford versus Clare will become a Munster semi final. Mm. And yeah. the, the two blue bloods will be relegated to uh, 90 seconds on the Sunday game that night. One camera. <laughs> One camera, exactly, Dale. <laughs> also in Turles today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plucky Tipperary. Uh, yeah. Um, so, Dale, how do you, like, John Kiley's in a nice position. Obviously, he's not, like, he, he won't be being, like, complacent or anything like that. I think that's, you know, impossible for John Kelly to be complacent so does it come down to who who he really wants to beat the most or will he as Rory says will he just use the panel he has you know Shamie Flanagan supposedly is on the way back is Kyle Hayes supposedly back on two legs um yeah he can rotate a little bit you know rest the players he think might need a rest and he can go out and aim to win both games and we're just trying to talk this up for a bit of intrigue yeah, sure. Look at that. Be the general thing out there. People be saying, "What are they talking about?" Even, but uh, look, I've been trying to agree with you a little bit that all this talk as well, and this is going around Limerick as well. You can be sure that Tip Tip have no one like left. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and they were so bad against Clare, and and that can lead to a little bit. Even if you're Limerick, who have been, it can lead to a little bit of complacency in the mind. And I give Tip a shout of turning up and making it a good contest because they're. Look, tip or tip, like, they, yeah, yeah. you know, they, they'll play with pride and they'll be hurting. And I think, you know, but I couldn't see them getting a the result, Mike, to be honest, because I think he'd, he'd like to have it done and dusted. I mean, as soon as he beat Waterford the last day, what I was saying was that he can map out his year now, John Kiley, really. You know, he, he can have a look at it. He doesn't need to absolutely win on Sunday because he still has the, the luxury to clear game. And they look like they're in the tree anyway with the score difference. So... I think I think they'll like to get it done on Sunday. Now, will it, will you see changes? I'd say you could. I'd say, but 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 think about these changes, Mike. Um, giving Richie English a game, Richie English, nearly yeah. everyone <laughs> in the country would love yeah. to have him. Um, possibly starting Carl O'Neill. How sad was the, was the, our our association's decision not to allow twenties play Carl O'Neill doing hurlies last night with the boys? Because I the last year I was with that Limerick Academy, these were the lads that came in at under fourteen. 
Colin O'Neill, Jimmy Quilty, Aidan O'Connor, uh, Adam English, all these, well, Adam would have been younger, but all those lads last night and to see Cahill carrying Hurley's last night. I mean, look, there's been enough spoken about that. It's mm. all wrong. But Cahill starting, like, you know, Keane Lynch not available to start. Shemi Flanagan definitely seen game time, possibly Oshin O'Reilly. So, like, it'll still be a formidable outfit, a huge local crowd. Will the tip crowd travel? Mm. I don't know, you know. So, um, look, I, I just can't see any other way, but they, they'll be sitting pretty and uh, leave off seven or eight in for the clear match and we get into the Munster final. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> well, uh, Jared, it, it, it is like, Jared, I think everybody agrees around Robin is, is fantastic. I think we're getting the the bang for our buck we're getting when, when you know, there used to be five games in the Munster Ireland Championship, you know, or four games in the Munster Ireland Championship. Now there's however many, I'm not counting kind of the maths, um, but there's a lot. There's that many in the weekend almost. Um, so we're loving it. Um, but I suppose the downside, everything has a downside. The downside here is, you know, Tipperary in court game on the last day is going to be a pretty sad spectacle. Um, you know, Waterford and Clare might argue if Limerick put out a weakened team in Ennis that, you know, there's an unfair advantage to, you know, uh, sorry, that Waterford might complain if Ennis, you know, if Clare, if Clare face a week in Limerick team that, you know, the competition isn't quite fair. That's that's the payoff, I suppose, isn't it, for the round robin that it's almost impossible for there to be five teams with something to play for in the last round. And this is just what what is going to happen when you have a couple of dominant teams. Well, I thought when it started first in 2018, it was a fantastic concept and it was a great competition and everybody looked forward week on week. Who are we playing next? There was a continuity there. It was a bit like a mini league. Uh, 2019, the Munster Championship was a little less uh, successful. Leinster, Leinster in, was fantastic that year. Le though, Leinster sure. was great that year. You're <clears> quite <throat> right. You're quite right. So between the two of them, there's always something happening. It's fantastic. It's great for hurling. Hurling needs it because mm. when you think about it, you know, there are going to be two major teams uh, in Munster and two big teams in at least two big teams, if not more, in Leinster out of senior intercounty hurling by the middle of May, and we will not see them again until January 2023. That is horrendous. That's no way to develop. We saw a situation in the last couple of days where you had that Kilku player saying that he didn't want to play football for Down. He was a club player. Right, we don't want to yeah. see that. We want to see players playing at the highest possible level. And the only, the, way, the only way they can develop their skills, surely, is by competing against the best in as many competitive matches as they possibly can. And to have this championship completed so quickly, I mean, they all are in finals in July. Oh, I, I, it maddens me, to be brutally honest with you. Well, I'll give, I, 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 I give you an interesting one, right one there. Sorry, Dalo. In On the 19th of May, 2002, the Munster Championship began. On the 22nd of May, 2022, the Munster Championship will effectively be over. Now, that is some seismic shift. And I heard you mention, Dalo, on another podcast. We'll give it a plug. It was the examiner's one. But you were there on Sunday and you said, you know, there was a kind of a nip in the air. It was a bit cold. It was a bit squally. It didn't kind of feel Munster Championship. Like, you know, it didn't have that, you know, the kind of bacon heat that you would normally associate. The really hot summer's day, lads around the town the kind of festive feeling that you get during the summer. And I think this is all part of it. Like this, you're in, we're in a blitz format that's been run off in spring-like conditions. Mm. And I do think that it has taken somewhat from it, from the whole experience. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that for me anyway. Yeah. Sorry, Dale, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was just saying like a month too early, I think, Mike, you know, that's, that's mm. the point. I think everyone yeah. is going on around the table here that that, that is. And that, you know, I, I think, look, there was nothing wrong with the August finish, um, yeah, and especially fine. with the directive that the counties get their club championships down to a, a, a max of 16 teams competing for their various mm. championships. And there was no issue, I think, with club players because we, I know my own club, we've lads going after the States now, no man's land. Like in Tip, I know, uh, had penciled in their championship, and we're all speculating the Tip could be gone by the 22nd of May. They penciled in their championship for, I think, the middle weekend in August. And there's fierce talk now that they're going so to have June to bring and it July. Forward. So no hurling in Tipperary for two months. And, and so this Gigi, is what we this is what we cleared out the calendar for. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> look, I for me a lot of the problems were like you know my first year on the Clare panel, Mike. Would you believe this? Now I was a sub in 1989. 
a greenhorn just not long ago to minor and um, Watford hammered us on oh, the end of May anyway and it was gone knockout of course and that year uh, my club Kirkcastle got to the county final and just played the 22nd of October that's my <laughs> birthday that's my birthday right and the boys I remember the boys in the print they sang happy birthday but we went up and got beaten anyway over six mile bridge but anyway 1997 Clare won the minor and senior All-Ireland titles and Kirkcastle we're in the county final on the 22nd of October. So it just goes to show you what can be done, what yeah. was done, what was all wrong about the structures. And now, is it still going to be all wrong, despite the fact that we're bringing our alarms forward to the 17th of July, that the tip lads won't have a club match? Yeah. And we're still going to have the same problems with the States. I, I You know, we have three of our best lads at the moment. Have just, And I don't blame them. My own daughter is signed. Enough. I signed 10. So I signed 10 sanctioned farms in okay, our ones. club here for, for lads to go and play football. Uh, not only club players, admittedly, but there's 10 of them going. And good luck to them. Best of luck to them. Can't blame them these, yeah. these poor lads are the, two, are the lads that have been locked up for the last two yeah. years. You'd say, off you go, lads, and enjoy your lives. Life's too short, you know. There's, two, there's, there's more important things, and football will be there for you when you come back. But we're a microcosm of what's going on on a much bigger picture right across the country. So the point is, you're going to have club managers across the country getting onto their, con- they're getting onto their club executives saying, delay, delay. Club executives are going to be going into county board meetings saying, delay, 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 until we get all the players back. So what did we actually do this for? Like, so that yeah. we can all go on holidays in August? Yeah, nothing has changed much. Like right. just, just on that, like we're playing county league at the moment and back kind of involved. And we're playing without our county players in the story. And... We got we got one of them there for last week, and because he wouldn't make in the twenty six, but oh, we played Scarif and they had Patrick Crotty or Mark Rogers, no sign of them. So what are you learning? I don't know. Mm. We've three rounds left. That's all. If we don't make the semi final, which is kind of t- touch and go now at the moment, um, we wait on provisional first round in Clare is the same weekend as the All Ireland, I think, or maybe a weekend before it, because they had to give provisional fixtures but now Clare are going kind of well could we be in an Ireland <laughs> could we even be in the final could we dare to dream yeah I've yeah. gone back again yeah. so one question like, can I ask one question when will the All-Ireland club finals be played will it be this year or in 2023 no it's going to be the end of January again sure yeah but what is the point of all of this yeah, the you provincial like the provincials aren't train. moving yeah yeah the they provincials were aren't moving train, so yeah. the counties are going to stick with August September starts basically because yeah. no county wants to run off their championship and have their champions kicking their heels for a month before the provincial start so yeah, yeah. it does seem like they've kind of they've they've pushed everything too far forward with the inter-county and as the lads have outlined they've left this desert do, 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 in june yeah. and july which do, do, do is you know nonsensical the gas thing is, right do you know what the gas thing is if you look back right to the um the uh would you well, how would you describe them the controversial club players association that's certainly how they might be looked at within the corridors of power in croke park right if you look back at like Derek Kavanagh, a good friend of mine, was actually on that uh, initially, as was was um, Aaron Kernan, um, Liam Griffin, I think Anthony Miles, and a few others. Now, um, Michael Briody, I think, might have been the chair there. He was, yeah. Their initial plan, their initial target, was only to get the All Ireland finals moved by two weeks. <laughs> like they, 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 they couldn't actually believe it. They're moving it back. They're actually going to give us. Should they disbanded? Job done. Yeah. Job done. Like we, you know, like they they must be actually considered when the annals of Gaelic history or Gaelic Gaelic games history are written, the, the most extraordinarily <laughs> successful association ever developed because they pretty much got everything they wanted. Yeah, know? job done. We're out of here. And then the the so we're talking here about this this blitz style championship. And yet this weekend, um, which is about slap bang in the middle of of the provincials. There's four matches on in yeah. between football and hurling at senior level, and you wouldn't count any of them as close run things. You got sorry Cork v Kerry on Saturday evening, obviously Donegal v Cavan. Don't be, don't be too hard on them, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's been, it's been a there. tough couple of weeks. Donegal v Cavan, Galway v Leitrim, and then Limerick v Tipperary. That's it. They're, they're the four matches, and then mm. last weekend or the weekend before we had nine or eleven Top matches. Seeing last weekend. Yeah, so uh, you know it's before. it's not saying it's an easy job by any means, but at the same time. 
it does seem like at one hand we're speeding through and on the other hand we're um we're leaving ourselves with a little bit of a, a, a famine on what will happen then again then is uh on the weekend of the i think is it the 28th which is the weekend that the provincial football finals begin so you're going to be knee deep in provincial football finals some of which will be pretty good by the way because you'll have more than likely galway ross common you know, look, who knows what will happen up north. But let's say if it's, let's say for argument's sake, Donegal man, it'd be a fantastic match. Dublin Kildare, we hope, will be competitive. I'd have my doubts. And look, Munster, maybe, you know, look one sided, all right, in fairness. But all that's going to be happening on the same weekend as the first round of the football qualifi- qualifiers, which is eight games, which is eight games all featuring Division One teams. Now, hmm. our Division One or Division Two teams. And the Champions League final and the Champions and Cup Champions final. League, and the Champions League and the Champions Cup final. But the point I'm making, Mikey, is so you've eight, like this could be like on the same weekend, you could have Tyrone playing Mayo, Armagh versus Donegal, you know, uh, Kildare versus uh, Ross Common or whoever the case mm-hmm. may be. Like, I don't know. You better have cameras at all those matches. You'll get riddled on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. So this this weekend, anyway, the cameras are at Donegal v Cavan and they are at Limerick v Tipperary for football. Where are you, Ger? I'm at uh, Limerick Tipperary with Anthony. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Pams and Coke Pams on, for the live TV on Sunday, the two lads. So hopefully it'll be a good game. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're glad we could get you together just so you could kind Warm of uh, gay. I kind of get the chemistry going. It's good. Yeah, we've all the potential uh, changes for tips after that. <laughs> yeah, Jar, as we predicted there early towards the morning. Yeah. Now that your producer knows that Jason Ford is out, that'll help as well. Yeah, but that's handy. That's thanks for telling me that. <laughs> Um, and obviously you can follow all the matches on Saturday and Sunday sport, all four of them. Plus the, uh, obviously there's lower division hurling matches as well. There's not just four matches on and, uh, you'll get reports and uh, roundups, reaction analysis and everything else on the RT sport website and the RT news app. So just to say thank you to Ger and Anthony and to Rory and to Colm earlier, and we'll chat to you next week. Thank you. earned it by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us but what I love in Hurling I love players that will never give in he hits it he hits it it's over the bar oh holy Moses